Hello my pirates, this is the Captain O'Connor and today I speak English because my guest today it's my dear friend Roland King Moses is with us. How are you Roland? I'm doing good my friend, how's everything? <laughs> oh that's good. Uh, Roland, Very good to you, you know? <laughs> it's been a wide It's been a while yes. since the last time we uh, we met, but for the people who know the page, uh, uh, since the page exists on YouTube, Roland uh, was and will be for sure uh, my boxing coach and yes. is a dear friend of, of mine. But uh, Roland, you have to explain because yesterday <laughs> I realized that you opened the door to a new career Now yes. you are a yes. singer with a new single, Baby Come yes. Over. Yes. King <laughs> Moses, you have to explain. So tell me what happened. Well, you know, as I said, um, I was in the Caribbean last August. Yeah. And um, I was speaking to my uncle, who was, uh, who was a musician back in the 80s. Okay. And uh, they had a group. And. Um, I told him that I was going to do music next year, which is 2020, which is this year, <laughs> you know? And, um, and uh, I yep. literally started, I started writing music in January. Okay. And, you know, six, six months later, my first release is out. And I think I have written probably over a hundred songs already. What? Yes. And I've, and I've recorded, I've recorded about uh, 28 to 30 songs. Okay, so uh, yeah. so it's very serious. Yeah. At, at least two albums. <laughs> at least, yes, yes. <laughs> at least two albums. So yes, yes you know, yes. Uh, it's the you know it's the perfect timing because your song. So it's uh, it's R and B dance all. I really like the vibe, yes. but it's yes. really really great for the summer. Yes, it's, yes, it's you perfect know, for the summer. Yes, yeah. because um, I have a, a, a Instagram page. Um, King Moses music, you know, and um, right now, um, you'll see on the page I do Afro beats, reggae, uh, hip hop, and soca. So soca and Afro beats and reggae is my major is my major platforms that I release music on. Um, the hip hop, I have a um, I have a hip hop single coming out next month. Okay. And I also have a, a nice a nice soca groovy coming out next month as well. Okay. So I have two songs coming out ne next month. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you do you already have the, the title of the next song? For yes. My, for so the next song that's coming out, it's uh it's for you know it's for um the Black Lives Matter okay. movement. Um the song is called Fire It Up, you know. Um Uh, featuring a, a female vocalist, you know, who's very good, and I writ and I written the whole song as well. Um, I also have a song called "Bubble on Me," so the song is called "Bubble," and um, in 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 Caribbean term, yeah, bubble, bubble means wine. <laughs> no, okay, like, like that, that you're whining, yes. So that's what bubble means. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. speaking yeah. of wine. For, for my for my French uh, audience and for myself, you know, I'm uh, I'm already uh, have the taste to, to listen your your music. Yes. <laughs> that's so good. That that's uh, so good. You know, but you, you know, sometimes you know the moments. You know, the 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 planets and the, the stars are aligned because I wasn't on my trip. I was really dance all uh, this week, and boom, yes. I I heard you, but. If I have to say, I'm not surprised that a, a guy like you can can do it because when you know Roland, when you know King Moses, you know that when you have something in the head, when you have a goal, he do everything to go uh, to go there, and I, I really yes. respect that uh, with you. And you you did it uh, in the sport. Now you yes, did it yes. in, as an artist, and um, I also I'm not surprised because. You, you remember Roland when we we train? You know the music was always with us uh, yes, during, yes, during yes. The, the training. You know, and uh, when we train late, you know when the the the, the sun uh, 
uh, go down uh, in the gym uh, during the summer with the with the, the sound system. Uh, yeah. I remember <laughs> li listening to. I, I discovered uh, Travis um, Travis Scott because of of you. You know. You know. Yes, yes, so now yes, I have yes, Travis yes, Scott in my in my phone because of you. Music guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, as you you say, Roland, uh, you, you, your heritage is from the the Caribbean, you know, from yes. Greece, and yeah. you um, uh, uh, you did a lot uh, in the sport for for your heritage because for the people who don't know, we already uh, a few years ago we did an interview with uh, Roland. Remember this, guys. The yeah. the link, Huge change, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the link is just below. If you want to see the first interview uh, with Roland, is just uh, below. You know, it's good memories. You know, it was in the gym when we uh, where we train. But for Granada, you compete at the Olympics. Yes, you compete at the Olympics in two thousand eight, Beijing. You know, uh, at the Olympics and. Uh, so, you have so many stories about the Olympics. Yes, you have the competition in the ring, but also with all the people around. You know, can you can you uh, say to my uh, uh, to uh, my people? Can you say your your story with Dimitrios Andrade? Oh, Dimitrios! <laughs> <laughs> Dimitrios, yeah, my my good friend Boo Boo. <laughs> Boo Boo, yes. Good. Well, um. To be honest with you, me and Dimitri, we met in Kansas City yes. World Championships. Yeah, you, for Kansas City, for the people yeah. who don't know Kansas City, you all, always have a big uh, amateur tournament in Kansas City. Yes, in Kansas North, City, yes. The for best, the Kansas City World Championship. The best yeah. of North America go to Kansas City for the tournament. Yes, and I was uh, I was an amateur boxer and I came... I came um, I came uh, second second place as a novice, you know, uh, at, at the Kansas City World Championships um, because I got injured in a very tough fight I had in the semifinals before I got to the finals. And, um, yeah, so the thing is, for the first time going to Kansas City, I made it all the way to the finals as with, with no coach. I just went on there by myself. <laughs> yeah, and I found... And I found um, That's a fight. I found, um, and I hope you remember, uh, it was it was it was Shug, um from Crunk Crunk Boxing Gym. Yeah, you know, uh, and he was the one who worked my corner with Shug, you know. And then I did I did some pads with uh, Boog, Barry and Barry Hunter from the from the Headbangers Gym. Yeah, you know, I work with them, you know, to my on my pads, and then I go and fight, you know. But uh, I met Demetrius in in um, Kansas City, and we met at the 2007 world championship games Aiva, you know and Dimitri was was a little worried about me and then in the hallway of the hotel in Chicago he said he said he said he said you're number two I'm coming for you, <laughs> you <know? laughs> so uh, uh, that was a that was a really good 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 story there because you know yeah. um as a as a novice fighter you know I entered the, the AI Bay games with only seven fights. Yeah, and you you went to Beijing with with nine. With nine, you nine went fights. there. You went that with nine. That's nine, with nine. Yeah, so I was, so I was still a novice fighter. I was still a novice fighter, you know, uh, at the World Championships game, and I was still a novice fighter at the Beijing Olympic Games. You know, so um, you know um, when 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 I when I got to uh, to, to to Chicago. Um, met Demetrius, met Gary Russell Jr. Uh, the story about Gary, Gary Russell Jr. was uh, Gary Russell Jr. trained in my hotel room to get ready for his fight. <laughs> okay. Which is crazy. A lot of people don't know that. But my trainer, uh, Jamie Phelps, trained uh, Gary Russell inside of our hotel room to get him ready for a fight that he had the next day. You know, and... Um, he actually performed good. He did everything that that he told him to do. Yeah. It, worked, it, worked, it worked like a charm, you know. And, so, and he win uh, his uh, his spot for the Olympics because Olympics he, there, went, yes. he went to the Olympics and uh, weirdly he uh, he went sick and uh, he can he could not compete. He has to go back uh, to the U.S. It's a weird story. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, it, it, the, the thing that happened in the Beijing Olympics, Gary couldn't make the weight. Okay. You know, he, 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 he couldn't make the weight. And he will tell you that himself. He, he, he couldn't make the weight because um, I was in the sauna with Gary trying to trying to help him make the weight. Oof. You know? Uh, yeah. 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 It's a very, it's a very, it's a very, uh, you know, the thing is like, he should tell, uh, you know, um, through the story, but the thing is, he just couldn't, um, he just couldn't make the weight, you know? And that's why he didn't um, com compete. But the thing is though, he was very smart. You know, he, he already had a contract plan, everything going there. So he went back home, turned pro, yeah. which, which is what I should have done, <laughs> you know? I should have just went back home, yeah. turned pro right away, you know, because I was just coming off the Olympics, you know, and I had a very, I had a very, um, how should you put it? Like there was a hype, you know? Yeah. So once you come from the Olympics, there's a hype that, that you know, once anybody that comes to the Olympics has to be good, you know. For instance, um, Deontay Wilder. I met Deontay Wilder there. I met uh, uh, Bubu there. I met um, Saddam Ali yeah. there as well. Um, a lot of great fighters. A lot. Yeah, and look, look, look the, this picture. Because, you know, it's life... Life is weird. Life is crazy because uh, two weeks ago, I yes. have uh, two interviews with the big guy on the picture, and now he's the the, the French uh, heavyweight champion, and he went wow. to, to the Olympics for uh, Algeria. It's Nafel Wata. He's just uh, with uh, Badu Jack, and the little one is Nordin Ubali, who is a world champion now. Uh, wow. You know, so and and you have to understand, guys. Roland was just there, was just with this guy, you know? Yeah. Yes, yes, I was. Yeah. I was there with all of them, yeah. you know? I was there with all of them. Yeah, like you... even, um, even, what's his name? There's a there's a, a fighter uh, who's living in Mon Mon Montreal right now, out of uh, Colombia. Yes, Alvarez. Elida Alvarez, yes. Me and, me, me and Alvarez are really good friends. You know, when we were, when we were in Chicago and when we were in Beijing. We handle all time together, you know, and I, I'm so proud of him to see him go so far and do so good. Like I'm so like you don't understand. Like I'm I'm really proud of Alvarez, you know, because he he really had a really tough upbringing, yeah. you know, and and I'm, I'm happy to see him doing so well, you know, you know, in Montreal, you know. Yeah. Very, did very, did very, you very, very did you jump uh, uh, on your couch in front of your screen when he knocked out uh, Kovalev? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I seen that too. <laughs> that was yes, I did. I did. I did. I watched that fight, and and I was, I was, I was, I was so happy for him. You know, like I was, you know, he has a lot of power. You know, he has a lot of power in that in that in that hand of his. You know, so yeah, I was shocked. You know, to be honest, yeah. I was, I was really because Kovalev is a good fighter, right? Yeah. You know, former world champion. You know, fought guys like Andrew Ward. You know. Um, a lot of good fighters. So I mean, to to, to see Alvarez come and do what he did to him, you know, is a very good thing. You know, I'm happy for him, of course. You know, and and I hope he continues to do very very good things in the sport of boxing. You know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, of course. And uh, uh, what is great also to um, to have trained with with you that is uh, when we. We, we spoke about uh, boxing uh, after the the training, you know, we spoke about guys and you realize that few years later, they are world champion. Do you remember when we spoke about Caleb Plant? Uh, and yes. Now, and, and, and this guy is now on the top at the super middleweight division, but we, we, um, we knew, we knew before everybody that this guy was so, so good yes so Roland King Moses you know you also had a few uh, pro fights and in uh, your path in boxing was uh, not a, a usual path you know no. for an Olympian <laughs> really not an usual it was unusual for sure you know yes. and <laughs> and you finished to have fight but for me you know I uh, I dream to have you, you your fight, but you fight in US, but where in yes. US? In North Dakota. 
in North yes. Dakota, in fights, you know, where you where the uh, obviously uh, the the B side, but you were so good. So can you and I will I will show to my people. Uh, I will show to my people what kind of fight you you did up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can you? Yes. Can you recall some of the story you have with fight in North Dakota with strange, more than strange decision? You can see the knockout, no, the knockdown just knockdown. there. The knockdown. Which they call it? Which they call a slip? Exactly. So, you know, it's so crazy, right? You became you, know? you became a, a champion of no contest, and yes. why? Because uh, because uh, you uh, you hit too hard. Roland, you hit too hard. Yes. yes. Can, can you recall for us? Well, what happened was with David. With David, uh, I remember his name. His name is David Lack, Lackey, I think. You know, and um, he, that was my first fight. And I went in there, and I was sharp. I was very sharp, very strong. Yeah. You know, you can and see. and I went in there and I did what I had to do. You know, um, of course I won. I won. I won that fight. You know, um, as you can see. You know, um, the leopard trunks was from one of my favorite boxers, uh, Emmanuel Augustus. But a lot of people who don't know Emmanuel Augustus. Yes, we spoke Emmanuel about Emmanuel Augustus is one of my favorite fighters. <laughs> I, I just did a video with Patrice Volney uh, two weeks ago about uh, the drunken master. Yes, a great fighter. So the thing is now, you know, I went there and I, I won that fight, of course. And then uh, after that, I had um, I had another fight. Against Ryan Ryan Soft, uh, who I who I just dominated all four rounds, knocked him down in the in the second round. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think the second or third, but knocked him down in the second round, and it was the must. It's called a must ten point system. So, um, you know, if you if you lose a round, it's ten nine. You know, if you get knocked down, it's ten eight. Yeah. You know, and I knocked him down. I knocked him down in the I said in the second round. So which is a 10-8 round, you know, and the fight went on all through four rounds, and they ended up giving him the win. And then they and then they they, 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 they they changed it to a no contest because they realized that they messed up and and they should have given me the fight, but they called it a no contest so that he keeps he keeps his record and I keep my record, you know. So it, it's kind of weird, you know, it's really yeah. weird. It's, it's been it's been a Oh, and I actually had another fight in Minot, yeah. my second fight, that um, I knocked this guy out. I knocked this guy out, and just because um, his he was he was kind of bent over, and then I looked at the referee and say, "Hey, you know, are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna pull me off or whatever, you know?" And then he didn't say anything, so I I went back and I knocked him out, and then they called that one a no contest. Because they said that how his glove, his left hand glove, was touching the floor, <laughs> you know. So, so it was, it was, it was a whole bunch of like crazy stories in my life. But, um, but you know, um, I'm very happy for for those experiences, you know. Mm -hmm. And it taught me a lot about boxing, and it taught me a lot about how to to work with my own boxers, you know, moving forward. Because in the boxing business, it could be very 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 tough and very political yeah sometimes you know what I mean? oh yes you're right oh, oh yes you're, you're so right and uh and so uh you you became also a, a trainer and uh, yes. uh so t tell me um roland I, i never asked you the, the question but as a trainer mm -hmm. uh do you have a um Uh, a philosophy you follow uh, maybe do you have uh, some um, some people some trainer you try to to follow the same path or to to follow the same rules uh, do you have uh, maybe a, a top uh, top trainer? top three or top five uh, best trainer yes. in your my my top three to be honest with you i i was a, i was at the mayweather gym getting ready for a fight that um Actually, I was in the with the gym training before I fought in minor against David, uh, against uh, Ryan Soft, the guy who I who I who I beat up there. Um, yeah, so I was in I was in Las Vegas training and I worked with uh, Floyd Mayweather Senior, you know, 
And Floyd Mayweather Sr. knows boxing. He knows boxing, you know. Um, I got the, the opportunity to, to talk with Roger and, you know, to, to speak to guys like Nate, you know. Um, Nate, yeah. Big Nate. Rafael Garcia, you know. Rest his soul. You know, um, I had a chance to, to speak to all those guys, you know. And, um, you know, Roger Mayweather, rest his soul as well, you know. Um, but, yeah, um, my top three will be, um, you know, uh, Floyd Sr., um, and Emmanuel Stewart, also, also, uh, um, Barry Hunter. Barry you know? Hunter, yeah. Barry Hunter, out of the Headbangers Gym, yeah. uh, in Washington, D.C. Um, yes. I is, remember, um, you were so, so pissed that, um, uh, the guy from Barry Hunter, um, Lamont oh. Peterson, uh, lost against Danny Garcia. You're so pissed about that. <laughs> yes, I was so really pissed at, 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 at Lamont Peterson losing to him. I was so mad, you know, because Lamont Peterson is such a smart and crafty boxer that I just thought that he would just outbox uh, Danny Garcia because he was so smart, you know. And he did. And, the, huh? the, and he did the, uh, the last part of the fight, the championship run. He yeah, completely he did. He dominate and he, he, he hit hard uh, Garcia. Yes, yes. Garcia, Garcia has a lot of power, and he has a chin. Garcia could take a punch. You know, he can he can take a punch, and 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 he has a lot of power. So I think um, that that will probably play a major part in the fight. You know, but uh, yeah, guys like Lamont Peterson, great fighters. You know, great great fighter. Um, who else is other that 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 gym? Um, there was a kid coming up uh, for his name. Is um book book son for his name um hmm. well he he was coming up I, I don't know what what happened to him but he was a good little fighter okay yeah. well and um, speaking of, of about trainer do you think this guy will become a trainer like he say on the on Insta Instagram do you think he become a trainer Floyd Floyd you know what. I don't think Floyd will become a trainer. I think Floyd will will become like kind of like a a mentor yeah. for a lot of uh, young boxers coming up, you know. Because the thing is, Floyd has so much knowledge, and Floyd Mayweather is one of the guys who I looked at growing up. You know, I mean, as as a boxer, you know, I mean, I I I uh, I, I I just like the fact that he was he was he was smart in the ring, you know. And the reason why Floyd Mayweather survived you know and is where he is right now is because of smarts you know and and if you ever train with with with, with Floyd senior their whole model is to hit Not get and hit. to get hit as less as possible you know so to try and keep your weight your wits in there you know what i mean try to be smart so the thing is boxing is boxing as i always say boxing is called a sweet science The reason why it's called a sweet science because if you think of the word science, scientists is known to be smart. You know, they figure out. You know, you know, um, they figure things out. You know, and Floyd Mayweather was one of the guys who figured out how to use the whole ring to his advantage and how to use people's strength or weaknesses and take them away, which is something that's very hard to do. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. So, so, so for that, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> Floyd is one of the best, you know, for that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, King Moses, uh, I know you're so, you're so busy now to, to write song, to write it for the yes. dance floor, for the dance hall. Uh, yes. do you still have time to, um, to, um, to check, uh, fights and, uh, to watch fights on, sometimes on TV? Do you still have well, time? Well, yeah, well, um. The last fight I watched was uh, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, <laughs> you know? Yes. And uh, to me, that fight was was a little disappointing. Oh, tell me why. You know, it was disappointing to me because the thing is, you know, for one, Deontay Wilder has been in, in the sport for so long yeah. that... I think that you know he needed to just to just be 
more of a, of a, of a what's the word I'm looking for? Like he needs to learn how to box. Yeah. Yes, but after, you know? ten, after more than 10 years. Yes, he needs to learn. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, to be honest with you, uh, when I saw Deontay in Chicago, 2007, yeah. I was I was shocked because, you know, Deontay Wilder was throwing punches from here and here, you know, and it was not, nothing was down the middle, you know. Um, the fight against Ortiz, yeah. you know, I thought Ortiz could have win the fight because, you know, he is a slick heavyweight. He fights so well, the, the rematch, fights well. He, he fights so well, you know. You know, so, so the thing is, this is how I judge the fight uh, with Tyson Fury because, um, The first fight with Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury was not mentally there. You know? Mm -hmm. The second fight, I said, I picked Tyson Fury to win because mm -hmm. I said, you know, Deontay Wilder cannot deal with movement. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know how to handle movement. Right? No. And and the thing is, Tyson Fury went to a new trainer in Kronk, a Kronk gym. Yeah. And Shug, Shug knows boxing. <laughs> you know, Shug knows boxing. Believe me when I tell you this because I have been to the Crunk Gym. Shug knows boxing because Shug learned from the great Emmanuel Stewart. You know, and um, to be honest with you, in the next fight, I picked Tyson Fury again because Tyson Fury has more time now to work with Shug. Shug is going to get in there and make sure he, he, he polishes him up very nice. Yeah. And he's going to beat Deontay Wilder again. But the thing is, the excuse that Deontay Wilder made about his costume being too heavy was just was just was just a, a very poor excuse for a loss you know yeah it's a very poor excuse for loss you know and the thing is what what i actually think that Deontay Waller needed to do was to find was to actually humble himself down find a good trainer and just learn how to box yeah but you know yeah Maybe, maybe, maybe it's too late. Maybe it's too late. Well, I mean, Floyd Senior, Floyd Senior thinks that it's too late for him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Floyd Senior was one of the guys that came on and said it was too late for him. He doesn't, he doesn't think uh, Deontay Wilder can learn boxing anymore. But you know, I think anything is possible. I think once you put your mind to something, and you're willing to learn, and you're willing to listen, especially and in you're, boxing, are you, yeah, are you willing to follow instructions? You know, it's very important because the thing is, um, a lot of people have a game plan in, in, in boxing. But as soon as you get into the ring and you get touched, that game plan goes out the window, <laughs> you know? So as long as you can stick to your game plan, if Deontay Wilder has a game plan for the, for, for the next fight, then the fight is going to be interesting. Yeah. But I'm still leaning towards Tyson Fury. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Know? Me too, me too, me too. Yes. Yeah. Me too. So, uh, do um, do you, do you have uh, so boxing is uh, almost uh, the the activity in boxing is almost uh, zero now. But uh, yes. do you have a fight that you want to see in the future? I think mm -hmm. I think you you have a guy you really want uh, to pass a test, and I think it's this one. Tell me if I'm wrong. Javonta Davis. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey. I would like to see him. I would like to see him either face Gary Russell. Yeah. Or or Devin Haley. Okay, he's just the, he's just here. This guy. Right. Yeah. Yes, I like to see him face that guy. Yeah. Or I like to see him face a, a Lomachenko. <laughs> oh yeah. You gonna say? Yeah. Right. Lomo Lomo will be, I think, his biggest test. But I don't think anybody wants any part of Lomo because Lomo is just too too good. I mean, it's too good. Too good. <laughs> so yeah, it's too yeah. good. You yeah. know. So so the thing is now the fight I want to see is is De uh, uh, Ramonte Davis versus Devin Haney. Haney. That's yeah. That's yeah. the fight I want to see. Yes, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you? F I'm pretty sure you. You 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 took a look at this fight. Uh, how, how do you rate the performance of this fight, Davis and Gamboa? Oh, you know what? To be honest with you, Gamboa was one of the 
the the most promising Cuban Cuban boxers. Yeah, you know because of his amateur record and the, and the things he did at the Olympics. You know? mm -hmm. But then uh, the the problem is that uh, Gamboa doesn't have a chin. That's that's the, that, that's Gamboa's problem. And the thing is too is that when you have when you have someone like Gamboa who's not disciplined. You know, um, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a good fight out of him. So the thing is, I think um, the Davis the Davis Gamboa fight was just another stepping stone for for Gavante Davis. Yeah. You know, because the thing is now the thing is now um, that fight to me was not was not something that I wanted to that I, I wanted to watch, but I ended up watching it anyways. But to me, it was it wasn't it wasn't you know what I mean like like give me give me something interesting you know like. You know, one of the top guys that's coming right now is Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia could be a problem for a lot of people. You think? You think so? Yeah. Yes, Ryan Garcia could be a problem for a lot of people. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, I can't see him beating Lomo, but I can see him giving giving Tank a challenge. Mm. I can see him giving uh, um, Bring the fight. a challenge. Mm. You know. I can see him giving Gary Russell a challenge, you know. Mm. But the thing is too is that is that uh, a good another good fight I'd like to see is is Tank Davis versus Gary Russell. Yeah. You, nobody think Tank about that. that yes. Huh? Nobody think about that. Nobody think about Gary Russell. He's never put on the uh, uh, the name. Is never uh, uh, mm. don't speak uh, that much about him. But you're right. You're right. Yeah. You, you know. Because uh, if uh, Leo Santa Cruz can have a fight with uh, Javante Davis, why not Gary Russell Jr.? Why yeah. not? Yeah. The thing is, though, I I'll be honest with you, there a lot of fighters are ducking Gary Russell because of his hand speed. Gary Russell has tons of hand speed, and he's very slick. You know. So the thing is, now that could be a huge problem for a lot of fighters. You know. So so the thing is now, Gary Russell only has. One loss, and that's against uh, Lomo. Yeah, you know, it's one loss. Yeah. So and it's, a, it's a decision know, lost, you know. Huh? And it, it, it it's a decision lost. Yes, decision lost exactly. Mm -hmm. So the thing is now, Gary Russell um, could easily give Tank Davis a lot of problem and expose a lot of flaws in Tank Davis' game. But oh, the thing yeah, is, agree, agree, agree. But the thing is, but Mayweather promotion do not want that fight right now because the thing is, that fight right there is going to be is going to be something that brings Gavante Davis down. Hmm. You know, so so I think you know once once uh, Davis faces David Devin Haley, and I I solidly think Devin Haley will win the fight. You know, and then it should be it should be after that then. Tank is gonna go and fight Gary Russell after that. Yeah, yes. You know? And you know when when I see Gary Russell because I I love to study the, the guy. I always yeah. think about you because he's a fighter and he's a trainer. He trained all his brother. Yes. All the brothers are trained by Gary Russell Jr. is is uh, already a trainer. Uh, in a, it's it's crazy. This guy this guy this guy is a master. Like mm -hmm. Luma is a ma master of boxing. I completely agree with you. Uh, so, Roland, King Moses. So, mm -hmm. what's next for you? You have the singer. A great singer. Perfect for the summer. My, my pirate. You have to give a chance to this song. It's maybe the hit of the summer. Yes, in yeah, France. Yes, for the yes. dance hall. Ray. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, You you have uh, already a uh, next song uh, next month and the month yes. after yes, yes. May, uh, so maybe yes. uh, having a show having a tour it's uh, what yes. it's something that uh, you think about it yes yes well you know my plan was when I got into music yeah was to uh, to be you know the the point of the thing one thing that people gotta realize is that music never dies you know. Music never dies. That's one thing, you know. Like we're still listening to music from the eight, from the seventies or eighties, right, right, mm -hmm. right till this day, you know. So music never dies. So the thing is now, my whole point is uh, of coming to music. Well, well, of course, you know, I, I did it because you know, I have the love of music. You know, I love music. 
you know, and um, it's a great way for me to express myself out to 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 the people of the world, you know. And I, I want to be someone who makes beautiful music that people could connect to, listen to, and, and be like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel it, you know. Like I want you to feel the music I'm making, so you are, so you cannot, you know, what I mean, so you cannot can can vibe with it and groove with it, you know. Yeah. Right, because 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 music is a beautiful thing. It is. It's a very it's a very beautiful thing. And um, as I said, like I love music. You know, I want to be one of the best at it. You know, and of course, I want to tour whether it's France, Montreal. You know, all over the world. Get me there. I'll come. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll come. You know. So um, yeah. So so the whole plan is I plan on dropping eight singles. And then I'm gonna do an album after that. Yeah, yeah. I'm do. I'm gonna do eight singles and do an album. But uh, right now, the uh, the major platform that you're gonna see me on mostly is Afrobeat and Soca. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you go, so you know the song "Baby Come Over." Yeah. Is the Afrobeat song. Okay. You know, um, and um, I'm trying to get into the Afrobeat market. You know, and uh, once I get into the international market there, then it's game over. Because I've written about maybe uh, 20 or 30 Afrobeat songs already that is just sitting there ready to, to release, you know. So it's very good songs. Yeah. 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 Uh, knowing yes. you, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, you have a, uh, a big advantage uh, with the competition. It's that you bring your discipline yes. of yes. boxing into the into the music world because I know you train, I know how hard you train and how crazy you train, you know. Uh, you're not... Uh, my, my dear friend, uh, are you afraid uh, to uh, uh, to deal with the, the people of the music business that are maybe uh, uh, more lazy than the, the people in the boxing gym? <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? <laughs> you know what though? Um, I always believe in I always believe in hard work, you know. And um, you know, they always say practice makes perfect, but no, that's not right. Practice makes better, you know. So the more you practice something, the better you get. You know, because the thing is, nobody is perfect, and there's no way you can get perfect at anything that you do. So. You know, me, my whole, my whole thing is that, you know, I, I, I want to do something. I think about it. I don't tell nobody what, what I'm doing. I just do it. And then when I'm ready, they see it, you know, they, they see me do it. So the thing is like with this music thing, I didn't tell anybody else except for my uncle. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, like for you and everybody else, my mom and everybody, They found out after I released the song. <laughs> oh, uh, so I was not the only one. Okay, all the only one. No, no, not the only one. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's just the way I am. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, yeah. me, I believe in that. If you if you're gonna do something, you know, you shouldn't go and broadcast oh, yeah. it to the world and tell people what you're doing because people are looking to see what you're doing. You talk the talk, yeah. And, uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so if you're gonna do something, you know, um, as how they say. Um, I sort of say, uh, for instance, um, no, it's it's not a question to say I will do something. You know, you you yeah. you you release to the world what you you did, and that's the difference with, with yes, the people who talk they, all the time and the people who do. That's the big yes, difference. Yes, because they say that you plant a seed, but the seed doesn't grow overnight. Huh? You know, you have to keep on you have to keep on watering it, and it's the same as anything you do, yes. sports or whatever. You can't come up overnight. You have to continue working at it and working at it until it gets to somewhere and then people can see it. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that, you know, Guillaume was doing that or, you know what I mean, or Roland was doing that or whoever is doing that, you know? You know what I mean? So it's good to have the element of surprise. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's good to have the element of surprise because, uh, I mean, I'm sure you were surprised, you know. And it was a you know? it was a great surprise, you know. It was I I had the song in my head all day, 
All yeah. day. I had this on my head all day, my friend. And guys, this is a hit. This is a real hit for the summer. So you yeah. have to check. The link is just below. You know, it's King Moses. This is the first single. I am pretty sure you will be back in the show to speak more about the, the next single. Yes. Uh, Roland King Moses, it was a pleasure pleasure yeah. to uh, yeah. to reconnect with you for that yes. good surprise and we wish you the best we wish yes, thank you, you very much oh, thank you very yes. much thank you very much guys yes. and, appreciate you all of course you know and yeah. Roland see you soon we already pre we already have a schedule uh, a training camp for the captain to uh, to be back in shape so yes yes so yes. I, I need yes. I need my trainer back I, yes. I'm like I'm like Rocky Balboa. I need my trainer back. Okay, <laughs> sure. okay. Well, it was a pleasure. See you soon. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye and boom. <laughs>